So for heavy modular friends, we know the intimidation factor is real. The first time you come up against making these things can be a real challenge. It's as complex as anything you've built in the game at that point, and then some. So today we're going to do something slightly different. We're going to make a blueprint that will output heavy modular frames in one blueprint. But I have not really practiced this. I know how many machines we need, but I'm going to show you guys how we kind of feel our way through making a blueprint to try to squeeze everything in. Coal, steel, and limestone goes in and heavy modular frames come out. Let's get going figuring out how to do this. I hope we can actually do it because this will be a pretty bad video otherwise. Unlike my last one click factory video, go check that out at the card up here if you're looking for a one click factory for crystal oscillators. I'm going to use some power shards here and this really makes our job a lot easier. So with overclocking, we need the following. One manufacturer, three assemblers, four constructors, one smelter, and one foundry. And that will give us everything that we need for one heavy modular frame per minute to output from our blueprint. And so if we take out our constructor, that's eight meters high. And we take out our smelter, that's nine meters high. When we take out our foundry, that's also nine meters high. That's taking it from the very highest point. So this little light on the constructor, these are all nine meters high, at least according to Satisfactory Wiki. We can definitely fit four constructors, one smelter and one foundry on one floor. So that's our first floor, that's nine meters. And the next kind of machine we would need would be three assemblers. And those are 11 meters high. You can see they have this tall little light on the top. These are 11 meters high. So nine meters on this side, 11 meters here for the assemblers that adds up to 20. And luckily a manufacturer is 12 meters high. So 20 plus 12 is 32. And how tall is the blueprint machine? 32 meters. So we're exactly at the limit. So we need to be very careful to make sure we can fit all of our machines in here on three levels, but I think we can do it. Let's figure it out. Since we need the entire height of the blueprint thing for our three levels of machines, we're not gonna put down a foundation. So this is gonna be a one click factory, but uh, if you want it on a foundation, you're gonna have to do one more click, but you know, good marketing term, one click factory. Let's orient around our four constructors. And I know from my other blueprints that we can fit four constructors across. Constructors are one thing wide. So let's put these down. We'll put them one block away from the end like this, because this will give us enough room to fit a lift and still be on the inside there on the outside. And then let's get back to doing constructors. So we'll do two, three, Four, and then we'll figure everything out here from here. Like I said, I haven't practiced this, so I'm trying to figure out how to do this. So the four things we need to make in constructors are iron plates, wire from iron wire, steel pipes, and concrete. The so two of those things are made from iron ingots, so we'll put those two things together here. That will be this one. Uh, so we need iron plates, and we need iron wire there okay, so that's those two sorted so okay i think this makes sense we have our two iron products here we'll put our smelter down here feed those two we'll put a foundry down and feed this machine right here for steel pipes and then we'll bring a belt of limestone in here and feed this one directly for concrete so let's put our recipes on here this one will be steel pipe and this one will be concrete there is the wall it has three holes so we could bring in the three things that we need iron coal and limestone but then if you have three belts that close together you're not going to have room for splitters uh and i just don't think that's going to be the case we're going to need to split these things off of these belts so we're going to do two things coming in right here and then we can have the third thing I'm guessing limestone since the concrete's down on the end come up in the next level above. Okay, smelter it is. So let's see here. That is enough room right there. We can put a splitter behind here and put it right in between like this. And we'll put in our belts between there. Then this will go in here and it should be right angle. Yes, it is. Good. So this is would be our iron product. So this will make iron and then that feeds those two things. Okay, so that's good. 
And then so we'll bring the iron in right here from that opening. And then we will use a splitter coming in from that direction and then line it up with this machine here like this. And let's get our belts hooked up. Okay. And we are going to build this so we can line up as many of these as we want in a row and just put the inputs in one end and have the output come out the other end if we can. So for here, we're going to try to get this uh, iron ore to go all the way through and we're going to try to get this coal which we'll put here to go all the way through and then the limestone i guess we'll probably have here on the top and have that go through as well so let's get a foundry out uh because we need some steel so let's line up the output oh, that is the output let me turn that around we'll line up the output there with that one we don't even need to leave room for a splitter because this steel is going straight in there and the only thing we're using it for is steel pipes right here Okay, then we can bring the iron in here. It doesn't quite line up. Go up to the thing, back two, and get a nice right angle. There we go. We're gonna need to bring this all the way through, and so we'll bring our coal right through here, but we then we'll split it off so we can continue this on just going into the next blueprint if we decide to line them up. So we'll bring a belt right here. This will be for coal. And then we still need to get our limestone in for our concrete. And then we also need to get our iron ore coming through all the way to come out on this end if we can. I'm just gonna bring that to there. So then we line these up in a row. All you need to do is come in here and hook up this belt to the other side of that wall. So let's just do this where we have an input with the center one like this here. And then eventually we can bring this bring this through uh, but this isn't gonna work it's gonna clip through all this stuff and we need it to go all the way through um, so we could bring it up like that and it clips through that splitter like I said so that's not gonna work so let's see what can we do here I am thinking that we can use some ceiling mounts now that we have them to use we can split this put another splitter on this iron ore and make it go up on the ceiling run it over this belt and then do something similar with the limestone and then split off the limestone to go into this constructor for the concrete. So let's try to build uh, the second floor here uh, that we need. So that's eight, which is the height of a constructor, but this is nine. So we need to get this uh, a little bit taller. So let's put on one, one meter wall. And now that's nine high. And if you were to use a regular one meter foundation, this will clip through because it goes down to eight. And so when I was thinking about this, I wanted to try something out here. I think I wanna use a roof because a frame, you can put a frame floor that's thin, but you can't put anything on top of it, at least machines directly on it. So let's just try out a flat roof. And I know in recent updates in the patch notes, they said that you can use floor holes through roofs and it will work. So. Let's just give that patch note a try and see what we can do here. Okay, so let me see. Let's put one more row on and then we'll see if we're running into uh, any problems clipping wise here. Oh, you know what? No, it goes right up to the edge in maybe the tiniest amount of clipping, but that looks pretty good. Okay, I hope that's enough. Uh, that's not too thick to put us out of the top of the blueprint when we get up there. And if not, we're gonna have to have a major rethink here on how to do that. So let's get this a few more of these going, make sure they turn the right direction or it'll look a little bit funny. That'll be our second floor where we can try some assemblers. Down here, it's a little bit dark, but I think we need this so we can do our ceiling mount. So let's get a couple, put a splitter right here on the iron ore. And then what we're gonna do is put a lift here on this side and then just lift this up to the ceiling as close as we can get without clipping like that and then we're going to take a belt off of that and bring it down here and bring it through so it'd be the equivalent of hooking it up to that end of the thing and now we also have uh this limestone that we'll bring in here after a good night's rest good morning we should probably figure out whether these assemblers go up here in a way that allows this setup 
uh, to have them before we finish it off. So I know that three assemblers fit across here because they're 10 meters wide and this is 32 meters wide. Okay, so let's figure this out. So we need stitched iron plates, iron plate and wire. Okay, that's right there. Iron plate and wire. Perfect. That one's good. And then we also need um, steel frame. So that takes reinforced iron plates from here and steel pipes uh which come up here okay that that's good that works out too and then this is uh encased industrial pipe also take steel pipe and then concrete uh okay the concrete's here uh that actually works out uh incredibly well okay so if we need to put this here talking this through like i said I, I haven't really planned this i knew how many many machines but uh we need steel pipes in both of these so if we put it up in the middle here it will split off here and here but we also need steel pipes from the manufacturer so we need to be able to use that side uh of this splitter so let's uh we can't do it the way it is there let's see if we can just move this over so it's at the end of the blueprint and move maybe move this splitter over a little bit as well like this okay that's good uh so steel pipes in either one and then we'll bring steel pipe up from down here and then that goes on the edge so we'll put that floor hole this out and then just hope this fits in there it might be a little too close let's find out of course it's too close see if we can move the splitter back a little bit sausage real sausage being made here trying to figure this out it's a fun challenge though a lot of people ask for a bigger blueprint machine and i'm not sure that i really want one part of the challenge what makes the blueprint machine is almost makes it too easy if you can just make an entire like giant factory blueprint at least this way you have to be slightly creative or at least have a lot of power shards uh, like I do to fit something into one space okay so steel pipes are sorted and then we can if we want uh, take this up to the manufacturer or run it somewhere else because the manufacturer will probably be directly over that so we won't be able to take that straight up okay so then this one is going to go into this input and then uh, this guy needs to go from here so let's actually put this in here and turn it to the side like this okay line it up back to two. so then this input takes reinforced iron plates which comes from right here and maybe we'll use another ceiling mount yeah maybe we'll use another ceiling mount and just kind of run it through here now we have this concrete concrete does go in here for sure and that's simple but we also need concrete to put into the manufacturer for our heavy modular frames directly so we need to be able to split this off uh, and but to have a splitter where we have enough room for a lift it needs to be something like here and then i think that's too close both to this so that works but i think this is too close to that machine yeah it is to make it go out the other side there's not enough space uh, there's an extreme option we could try let's see if that will work we can actually put this splitter i don't like the way that this looks but since we're a little bit more uh rough and tumble here since hey these are heavy modular frames it should be rough around the edges we're making a big sturdy product so let's see we can bring this splitter to do this where it's like really just like the top of the lift see how it kind of blends in like that it looks really like kind of a natural thing this will work and then we can bring a lift off either side to bring it up to the manufacturers but here we'll Bring that in there so then i know now we can bring a lift i think it fits that's too far so we'll put a lift uh on this side going up to the next floor for our concrete so we'll do that from our steel pipe here we'll do it from our concrete here we'll do it from encased industrial beams here in case industrial pipe in this case and then what's this making uh, modular frames we'll have it from modular frames here as well this output will go into this input here in a second so let's get that next floor on to help us line up everything and to make sure that we have enough uh, height room for a manufacturer I, I mean i i did the math but i'm still a little 
dubious it doesn't really look like there's enough room but let's let's check it out for sure all right so this is 11 meters high so that's eight and now we need three one meter walls normally i'd give myself a little extra space but i don't think we have room for it here and a one meter foundation would clip through so again we're going to turn to our roof now that we can put whole uh floor holes through them and we'll zoop this across so let's get our manufacturer on here we'll generally put this towards the middle i think just to give us room to work on all sides to get our inputs in the front and then to get our output out the back and that is the middle right there at least from left to right that should give us a little bit of room to work and just like the bottom floors i want to be able to make sure that if we line a bunch of them up uh like we have here i want to be able to just hook up a couple belts and then have a bunch of these blueprints in a row if I need them. And so that's our inputs that will continue through. That's not an issue anymore. But we also want our outputs to do the same. And so I'm gonna put another uh, conveyor hole wall over here like we have on the first floor, right here. And then that, in theory, will come all the way over here and go all the way through, but I don't think that's gonna work because we actually need our concrete to come up here let's just get that in where it goes then we need to bring this around uh, to the front and we should have room for two belts okay so we need to get our belt and we can bring that around there's room for two there so that that shouldn't be a problem but we're not going to be able to bring this through here or are we because these will cross somehow we need to cross these so maybe we can actually carry this through and put the output on the second level and then bring that across yeah let's do that that'll be fine like that and then we can have this belt go through uh, all the way across here and then bring this up by a lift to that belt. So why don't we just hook that up right now before I forget that that's what I wanted to do. And we'll actually take this off. I don't want to have wall holes on both ends just in case we're gonna stack these in a row, but I think I'll use this to make this. I think this is long enough where it'll go all the way across like this, yes. Okay, so let's do this and we'll get out a merger and then put this right on the belt. Line this up like this. Then we should be able to fit a lift in here. But I don't think that quite fits. Get a lift like that and then hook this belt in here. That should work because I heard a click here. I guess we'll see when we put it down uh, whether this works or not. But I think it should. It should go up there and then go into this merger and all the output will go back across. So I'm actually going to take this out. I'm going to take that out because then when we want to hook this up to another one, you'll just take it and hook it into the other side of that uh, conveyor wall hole over there. Let's get our recipe on here, which is heavy encased frame. So we, we're, we're shooting for one per minute. So we'll just underclock it now. Why not? So let's see. What else do we need here? Let's get these reinforced iron plates over here to the, uh, what is the steeled frame machine. So we'll put in a lift and we go up as high as we can without clipping and make it go this way. Cause if you can't have a little bit of an idea, this might work. It might not. So we'll put a lift here on to receive and keep it like that. And that might be a right angle, but I think it is not. Oh my gosh, it is. Yeah, boy. That's how you do it. Didn't mean to do that, but that works like a charm. Okay, so we have our reinforced iron plates going in there. Did we put the recipes on? We did not. Stitch iron plate. Okay, reinforced iron plate going there into here. Then this is our, what is this? Steeled frame. And then this is encased industrial pipe. Wonderful. So let's get this output going up. Hmm, what can we do? I don't want to have to move all this around, but we might have to. That doesn't go in there. Again, this is because we're using uh, roof, roofs, roofs, 
uh, is floor instead of foundation. So the height is a little off on the machine and the lift. And this is what helps us keep it inside the blueprint. Actually, look at that. Okay, I didn't notice this earlier. But the hitbox is, th is 12 meters high. But there's actually quite a bit that sticks out. This whole whole part here looks like it's above the outside of the blueprint machine but this still works this will save because it would have been red it wouldn't let me put this down if it extended outside the box so hey that's pretty good we'll make this a little bit easier on ourselves because that doesn't fit very well and we have enough room down here to screw around a little bit so let's just make this a little easier on ourselves so we'll have this go right here have this go out and then this should be able to go in there of course it's not too far to slope so let's actually back this up a little bit we'll put it in a similar spot but then we'll move it back to here we got room why not let's just make it a little bit easier so that'll hook up into there and i think that's actually fairly straight that's straight enough for me good enough for government work and then we can actually put another one down right here right here next to it and then that'll just make it easy for us to just run this to this. Go to the middle, back up two. And then you get a nice bright angle. Like so, even though you get this ugly slope because of the height difference. But that is okay. Let's get our lifts out here. We'll run this down to the ground. We'll run this one down to the ground as well. This output will come here, back up two. Nice right angle. Not a nice right angle. Why did it give me those lines? You a line liar? How dare you? All right, we'll go out this way this time. That's there, back up two. There we go. It all looks a little bit weird with that height difference. I have to say this is probably not the most uh, aesthetic build I've ever built in my life, but this will output one heavy modular frame per minute and one blueprint. So I think it's worth looking kind of a little rough around the edges so far. Why is that snapping down there? That is annoying. Okay, stop it. What do I need to do? Somebody will tell me on the comments, like, just pull down J and F11 and it will stop doing that. Like they always do. I'm always coming up with new keyboard shortcuts. Thanks to my lovely viewers. All right, we'll turn it this way. That way little bit easier to do it that way okay so we have those two outputs hooked up and now we need to get this steel pipe uh, out of here and up here so we might be able to do that right here that's all the way on the edge i'm not sure that will fit all right a little change of plans we're gonna have the steel pipe come in to this one here because it's a little bit funky to get this thing up to the next level with enough room so we're gonna actually have it come from that one down there okay now we have our steel pipe now we need to get our encased industrial beams up here we have a little bit more leeway here because the machine's not in the way and then these belts are also not in the way so let's get this uh encased industrial pipes going up here with a floor hole let's try it right here uh because i think that's in line with the uh, hold on here okay yeah it is okay so let's get a lift going in like that and then that will go in that even might be a right angle Woo. okay uh, and then we'll get this lift coming down here as well blue hook up the belt and now we are in business so that's three of the four inputs in our manufacturer so let's just go and get this last one and we'll run this right along the old edge Run it down all the way here, like so. And then this should, I'll bring it over here, back to, and that should go straight in. Wonderful. Again, maybe not the most aesthetically pleasing thing on earth, but it will work. I think we have a winner here. So I'm so excited to go try this out in the field. I actually forgot to do one of the most important parts of this blueprint, which is put in the power shards because we need to do some overclocking to make sure we get the right output of each part to be able to do one heavy modular frame per minute. 
So one of the things we have to do here is this on this concrete. This is something that actually comes out pretty slow and we need about 23 of these per minute. So we're going to overclock this to 200%. So we need two power shards here and we'll make that go to 200%. Uh, you can try to make it exactly. We actually need 24 per minute. And so you can just type in 24 here. Uh, if you're really hard up on power, you type in 24 and hit enter and it goes to the right clock speed. Um, I don't really care if it's four megawatts or more. So uh, I'm just going to leave it at that because this amount of power means nothing to me with my massive power plants. So I scoff at your half overclock. You're going to do it go all the way all right then our next victim for overclocking is our foundry here and since this is a big building this really does help us fit this in here and we just need one power shard here and then overclock this to 150 percent we actually need this all the way you need about 66 and a half ingots per minute you might as well take it all the way up to 150 uh all the way just to make sure you have a little bit extra and you don't fall short and the main thing we really need to fire up is this steel pipe production. This is used both in uh, in case industrial pipe, it's used in steel frame, and it's also used directly in the manufacturer for a heavy encased modular frame. So we actually need to put all three of these things in here and take this all the way up. So those are the three required overclocks to get this out. You need the foundry to go to 150%. You need the concrete to go to a little less than 200%. And you need your steel pipes jacked up basically all the way to 250 percent and if you do that you will get enough output from these machines to output one heavy modular frame per minute okay now that we have that let's go put these things out there and take a look at what it looks like in the field i'll catch you over by the northern forest in just a sec let's build some heavy modular frames let's get out our blueprint here heavy modular frames we want to make sure we have the inputs coming in on this side and we want it to be right aligned with our blueprint like this. And so that'll take a second to build. And voila, there we go. One heavy modular frame per minute. Ah, I found a crucial flaw in my design, which is why you don't build these on the fly in a video like I did today. You practice them. There's no way for me to get in side so let's make a door you notice two minor adjustments when i built in the blueprint machine one is this hole right here i kind of built this on the fly and i didn't really leave myself a way to get inside there to hook up the belt so i put in the hole and then i moved up this wall hole one meter i put a one meter wall in there in between and that has helped us get everything lined up a little bit better all right so let's get in here and hook up the belts to get this going so all we need to do is go in here where the next blueprint starts and hook up three belts. You have the coal belt there, you have the iron belt there, and then you have the limestone belt right there. Then the last thing you also need to do is go upstairs to the manufacturer and then hook up the output belt right here, like this. So then now all we need is the inputs. And I have to say, this looks absolutely hideous. Uh, but again, I built this on the fly. I didn't even get quite get the color right here on this one. So at least I'll make this slightly less hideous. Doesn't really help much, but nevertheless, this will make one heavy modular frame per minute. So let's get some of these inputs going in here. So first thing we need is coal. So we'll put this on here like this and then bring this straight out to this hole here. And then we have our iron, which is right here. we can bring this down back to and then we can bring this over here now we just need to get our limestone so we're going to kind of do this from quick and dirty here oh underwater pole very fun we're going to bring this over here and we'll do another tall pole then we'll do hook this up right into here like this so let's take a look in here and see if everything's working i hope so we actually not have enough input to get everything going green here but we got this turning white because it's overclocked so that's good and then over here we should also be overclocked yep that's good so it looks like we got everything going so let's check out the top floor 
and let's see if anything has made its way up in there yet. It's starting to take up, but this is gonna take a little while and it takes a little bit. All manifolds takes them a little bit to get going, but I hope this shows you that it is possible to put a heavy modular frames factory together in a blueprint so you can put it down with one click. Hopefully your impromptu blueprint factory looks a little bit better than this one. This one's pretty ugly in a very poor attempt to be festive. I guess it's festive in a way an ugly Christmas sweater is festive. Well, I hope you enjoyed this build and hopefully it will make building heavy modular frames a little bit more convenient. So until next time, I'm Dr. Loot Crate and stay stoked out there.